his name translated to humble, happy, kind. Yet his life would become so harsh because of the disdainful way he was treated. Instead of being able to go back to the family where he knew he was needed, he was forced to be tortured follow orders, and normalize all of his beatings. Inside that literal cage, he would escape to the vast collection of all his readings. His name was Adnan Farhan Abdul Latif, and I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him, but he was a Guantanamo Bay detainee who was never once actually charged with anything, the very definition of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. At the start, he tried to plead to them that they had the wrong guy. He wasn't too big in size, a simple man who was trying to start his life fresh. In 2001, he went to Pakistan to get surgery from the injuries of a previous car wreck. It was cheaper medical attention there. Who could have guessed he'd faced arrest? A wife and son back home who he made promises to when he left. He couldn't understand why the Americans saw him as Taliban. An Al-Qaeda affiliate was how his introduction always began. But for the decade he was locked up and constantly tormented, he was never once charged or even officially sentenced. He quickly found out that the war on terror can override even the Geneva Convention. And the tactics they abused would end up being endless. He had to turn to poetry writing, and I quote, as a way to preserve my humanity, because I think we can all relate to that medium in the times of tragedy. The stressed positions he was forced into, I don't care what they say, they were strictly to inflict agony. They would even resort to making threats against the members of his family. Now, Amnesty International once featured his work, calling it Poems from Guantanamo, and he felt that this could be the light that would maybe make his release possible. But the very idea of sharing the warmth of his wife and son that once seemed probable over the years would turn hunger strike, transferring the pain from his mind to his abdominal. The pressure had started to get immense as he solely saw some of his cellmates get freed. He felt like maybe his turn could be next. That glimmer of hope is once again what made him believe that his day would come when his soul in shackles was no longer forced to bleed. But in 2011, they once again overturned that ruling, taking away his ability to leave. He started to feel like he couldn't breathe. It seemed there was no way to get out of the strangle because he was sick of the treatment there and literally being chained at the ankle. He could not live up to his name there. Echoes ring through those halls of Obama's promises that that place he would dismantle. And on September 8th, 2012, humble, happy, kind Adnan Farhan Abdul Latif decided that his life at Guantanamo was just too much to handle.